Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Ordinary Data Scientist, where we talk about data science. Sometimes all the information are not given in the problem statement and that's when we have to dig into the details and try to find which information is missing and how to put that information in the correct formula to get that, uh, to get that probability. That's when this matrix come into the picture. We call it probability matrix, you know, uh, we call it probability matrix where we kind of uh, drill down the probabilities and try to capture, uh, try to calculate this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, information. Now, let's say this is your, uh, this is your four box matrix because we have only two probability probability of n is equal to 0 0.70 and probability of space is equal to 0 0.67 so this this is called let's say space box and this two is called your noise box okay now this is your yes this is your no this is your yes this is your no now what does it mean that this box if i'm putting any anything here this box that means this many people has said that space and noise together will improve the efficiency or improve the productivity. If I talk about this box, that means this many people, let's say I'm taking the example of X, X percentage of people says that noise will improve the productivity because noise is yes, but space will not improve their productivity. This is X. Similarly, if I talk about this box W, in the W it will say that neither noise nor space can improve the productivity. There are something else you need to take care of. Okay, so let's fill it. Now we know that how many people are saying that probability of uh, noise that will increase the productivity is 70. That means this row, this row you know the sum of this row is 0.7 okay because this is the probability where people saying yes yes and the sum of this column the first column is as you might have already guessed is 0.67 right that the space will improve the productivity is 67 percent now through the uh, through the book uh, the, through the uh, this statement we found that 56 percent of the people saying that both your noise as well as the space will improve the productivity now 56 will go just guess where where should it go both are yes right the noise as well as space so both are yes means here it will go 0.56 now you might have played Sudoku, you know, where we apply this kind of logic. So the sum of this entire row is 0.67. So you can easily guess what is the value of this box. This will be 0.14. And similarly, this sum of this entire column is 0.67. So the value of this particular box will be 0.11. Now, now here, this is the catch now we need to calculate this where both are no no okay we need to calculate this box now now can i say that if probability of saying no noise will work is equal to 0.7 can i say that probability of not noise will be equal to 1 minus probability of n this is the rule of probability right that if you have two cases and one case probability is x the another case probability will be 1 minus x because together the probability should be equal to 1 right so i can say that 1.7 is equal to 0.3 right i can say that similarly if you see this this box here this box here the the sum of this thing should be equal to 1 right either use some from this side or that side it should be one okay so this the the value of this box should be equal to 0 0.3 
and the value from this side should be equal to point three three right that's when you you will have that sum is equal to one and then sum is equal to one right one so now if you know that the sum of this particular column should be 0.33 you will say that hey the sum of this will be equal to one nine so that you know uh, one nine so that the sum of this two will be 0.93 and if you do sum like this it will automatically be 0.3 right so that's how you got the value of all four boxes right 0.19 right here it is 0.19 now once you fill this problem uh, once you fill this probability matrix if i ask you that hey what is the probability of noise will work but space won't you know the answer right first of all noise will work that means we have to stick to this row because this row says that noise will work the next statement is space won't so space won't means this box so i can say that this is the 1.14 this is the percentage of people saying that uh, you know the this will happen that noise will work but space will not work and so on and so forth okay so that's how uh, whenever you have uh, two statement you can uh, build this problem uh, this is uh, this probability matrix and can find the uh, the the further information around the probability okay so this is called your uh, probability matrix now uh, again there is another concept called complement of a union where uh, neither nor statement is there so you know as i as i just explained in this in this formula that if p of n is equal to 0.7 that means p of not n is equal to 1 minus p of n right the same concept applies here that uh, neither x nor y that means y minus or x or y either x or y okay so this is this is called complement of union now uh, spatial law of addition we have already discussed that if this uh, these two events that we had a and b if they are mutually exclusive or independent of each other the intersection will become zero and that's when you will have this kind of formula that p union x is equal to directly p of x plus p of y okay and you please solve a couple of uh, examples from the book uh, so that you have good understanding of the concepts uh, now let's quickly understand the uh, the law of multiplication or how to find the intersection okay now your joint probability that we have discussed joint probability or we call it law of multiplication so let's understand the law of intersection now what is the probability of a intersection b that means a and b both happens together the, the middle area right this area isn't it this area so uh, if you have remembered one of the previous uh, example that I have given in, in earlier lecture that let's say you have a basket with a four ball and four blue balls okay four red balls and four blue balls now if I say that hey two two uh, two kid, kids come the first kid pick a ball the first kid pick a ball and second pick also uh, second kid also pick another ball what is the probability that the first person has picked a red ball and what is the probability that the second person has picked a blue ball okay so here as we had like two uh, two events we have to multiply those two events to get the probability right what is the probability of a picking a red ball and b picking a blue ball okay with a replacement for easier calculation we say with replacement that means the a once pick and then put it back uh, okay so in this case we say that hey the 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 kid one picking a red ball that is 4 divided by 8 into 
as the ball has been replaced means we had again keep the ball back picking a blue will again be 4 divided by 8 okay so this is the probability of having this kind of occurrences so you can see here that the more we adding the condition we have to use multiplication not some multiplication to calculate the probability that event a has occurred into event 2 uh, uh, probability probability of event 2 okay similarly if you understood this formula well logic well you can easily write what is the probability of a intersection b means let's write in english that what is the probability of a given that b has occurred right so probability of a given that b has occurred so i can say that probability of a into probability of b given that a has occurred probability of a into probability of b that given that a has occurred so given that statement is represented by a vertical line now here we don't uh, give the importance to the sequence either a has a can happen uh, early you know and then b next or it can happen that b occurred already occurred and then a happened next right so that means we can rewrite the formula this formula as probability of b into probability of a given that b has already occurred right so let me quickly revise the formulas what is the probability that a and b happens together okay so we write it in plain english first that probability of a given that b has occurred or probability of b given that a has occurred both are same because we are not giving importance to the sequence which happens earlier okay so this is called your joint probability or law of multiplication and you can uh, calculate the uh, the probabilities of different kind of problem statement okay so uh, I'll, I'll skip over the uh, the problem statement because you know very easy to understand uh, and you can apply some of the uh, some of the formulas that we have learned and you will get to those results now uh, again as we saw the special case in uh, in addition where those are like mutually exclusive independent and all similarly in the multiplication also if these are completely independent you know like rain probability of rain and probability of picking a white ball from the box completely independent you know so that's when the the event of happening y given that uh, x has happened will be equal to your uh actually uh, turn out to be one actually right so if i say that hey a and b are completely mutually, mutually exclusive so a intersection b probability of a into probability of b given that a has happened so this given statement doesn't make sense because a will definitely happen right right so that's why we call it probability of a into probability of b directly we can calculate will already occur because that is completely independent uh, independent event okay cool the fourth one you know the fourth type of probability the first one we studied marginal and then union and then joint and the fourth one is now conditional probability in the conditional probability you know uh, where we say that we have to we will have a condition applied into the problem statement now if you if you look into this statement the probability of a given that a has occurred is some kind of condition only right so in the in the uh, conditional probability we will have this kind of uh, probabilities only like probability of x given that y has occurred you know that's how we have to calculate the probability so the formula that is there is equal to nothing but if i uh, if i brought this formula down okay so we say that hey probability of a 
intersection P is equal to probability of A given that probability of B A has occurred, right? So can I say that probability of B given that A has occurred is equal to P A intersection B divided by P of A, right? I can, I can write this uh, formula, right? Just here and there. And this is equal to in terms of uh, your uh, given uh, in terms of this can i write this that p probability of b into probability of a given that b has occurred divided by p of a right b because we said that p of a intersection b can be both right p of a into p b given a has happened is equal to p of b into p of a given that b has happened right so i just replace this with my second statement you know and then divided by p of a so this is the formula that is uh, that is there for p b given a has occurred okay so this is the conditional probability so Again, we will uh, we can calculate the probabilities using uh, using the the information and the probability matrix. We can easily calculate that. Now let's quickly scroll down and uh, look into the uh, the last important theorem of the book so that we can uh, complete this uh, chapter. The last important uh, rule is the Bayes rule, and uh, I think there are a couple of other videos. On YouTube which you can check they explain this uh, theorem very beautifully you know the power of this theorem um, I found that uh, using this theorem uh, some some uh, some explorer got to know about a treasure also so please go through those videos and you know try to understand the concept of Bayes rule I'll put the uh, the link to those videos in the description which you can go through okay so i'll understand i'll assume that you will uh, you will watch those videos to understand this uh, concept very very important concept you know uh, because those in those videos they have put animation you know where you can pictureize visualize how the things are happening so it's very important that you watch those videos and and get the knowledge of the base theorem okay so after after knowing all the concept I, I assume that you know we covered the entire chapters and uh, the, the important formulas that we saw uh, the counting rule the with replacement without replacement uh, the four kind of uh, probabilities you know we we, uh, we went through some of the formulas and all I assume that you people are getting comfortable with this formula and please solve a couple of uh, couple of examples from the book ping me uh, or comment if you want to if you want me to explain any particular problem statement you know and i can i can uh, i can show how to solve that problem probably in a, in a small video otherwise i assume this chapter is complete uh, in the next chapter we'll go through uh, unit 2 on distribution and sampling very very important for market research uh, you know because sampling is is a technique which gives you an idea how the population looks like and based on that you take a decision so very very important concept we will discuss but till then please uh, go through the videos that I, I will share in the description to understand the base theorem revise some of the concepts and uh, please solve a couple of problems from the uh, from the exercise so with that thank you uh, I'll see you in the next video thank you